My name is January Rodriguez. I'm from Akron, Ohio. Um, but I actually came to Miami because my husband was in the military. When we decided to have my son about 20, 22 weeks into it, I started having complications in my, in my pregnancy. I was losing my son. And then one particular doctor came into the room and he was the, what I call the statistics doctor. You know, if he comes in the next three days, he has 60% chance of survival. And if he does survive, he's gonna have all these issues and so forth. And I said, so you're telling me there's nothing more that you can do? And he said, well, I'm just telling you the facts. And I looked at him and again, I said, my kid is gonna make it to 38 weeks. And my kid did, he made it to 37 weeks and six days. He came out and he's healthy and he was happy. And then after that, you know, as he grew, you know, I kind of knew something wasn't right. You would talk to him and you wouldn't really know if he was understanding what you were saying. He just kind of seemed to be in his own world and other kids would come and they're playing in the room, but they're not playing together. And I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. I see this every day. So I took him to um, the doctor and here, if your kid is autistic, the first place where they actually send you is to like, get something, his hearing checked, where there's nothing wrong with his hearing. And so what they did was they put him in there with other autistic children who were combative. You know, one time he came home with his fingers cracked all the way through as if somebody had been stomping on his hands. I just kept saying, no, no, if God brought him into this world, there's nothing wrong with him. He'll be fine. But if there's a point where you have to kind of acknowledge, Lord, I need your help because he's not fine. And I remember one night I prayed and I said, Lord, I don't know what's wrong with me. I know that I'm in fear about this and I'm believing you at the same time, but it's help my unbelief. That's all I could say to him. I said, don't let my son suffer because I don't know how to manifest the miracle, you know, like, like it should be done. I said, whatever you tell me to do, I'll just do it. I had so much mommy guilt. I was carrying around so much guilt from having him and saying, it's my fault, that God was healing that. And as he was healing me, then I started looking at him and I started declaring. I started believing more spiritually than naturally. And with those two things, doing everything that I could in the natural, that's great. But when I started declaring victory over my son's speech, over his understanding, over him, now I'm starting to see people saying, gosh, he really has changed. Oh my gosh, his teachers at school, oh my gosh, I can hear him. And I'm like, yes, he does speak. You hear him too? And this, so th those were the things that started happening. And then he's starting to count. Wait, you know how to count? Then he's starting to give me, not just speaking, not just yes or no answers, he's starting to give me conversation. Mom, guess what happened in school today? I'm just believing where I keep declaring over, I keep speaking over, I keep saying, Lord, I take my authority. I believe my son is gonna be okay. Then I took him back to a doctor and the doctor, he walked in and he, he examined him and he said, Mom, he looks good. All the rest of the autistic stuff is gone. He said, so we really can't call him autistic anymore. God is real. And if you can't get to him, he will get to you. Just believe in him and just trust that what his word says, the miracle is coming. It is on its way. Time does not matter. That miracle, you just stand on it because God does it. He does it every time.